Hello, everyone. Welcome to an international relations capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we'll discuss some trade matters relating to the Indo-Pacific. As we have been discussing in the past, the focus is very much on Indo-Pacific for the last several months. First, the Quad, then its various avatars, different kinds, and evolution. And then suddenly appeared AUKUS, which separated trade and related matters from the military matters. And that discussion is still going on. We have been talking about it. And when the Deputy Secretary of State of the United States visited India just a day ago, she clarified it, but we suspected that um, AUKUS will be the main military alliance in the region and Quad will deal with more general issues for the good of the world. I think I had said this before, but she has now confirmed it. But at the same time, there is another drama taking place with relations to free trade agreements in the region. And the one that is in the news these days is another alphabetical soup, as it is known as CPTTP. I mean, people other than those who deal with these things will not even remember this, what this CTTP is. And these abbreviations, thousands of them. In fact, one of my Hindu articles, I wrote about the alphabetical soup. So many of these uh, abbreviations are floating around. And it is only the professionals who will really understand what it means. So while Quad and AUKUS are well known, now there is something about the CPTTP. What is this all about? This was established by President Barack Obama as part of what was considered United States pivot to Asia. You remember? Some earlier days, there was this talk of Asian pivot, American pivot to Asia. And that was their initial stage when they started focusing on Indo-Pacific and started moving a lot of their American forces into the region. And at that time, he also thought about a, a free trade arrangement in the, in the region. So it must have taken a long time for the Americans to negotiate this. And they set it up all the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So that is the original free trade agreement that the Americans set up with 12 countries in the region. India was not in it. I'll come to the names a little later. And um, so this was projected as a major trade initiative by the United States to Asia Pacific. And the other countries were supposed to join in, not only Indo-Pacific, I mean, not only the Indian Ocean region, but also from the Pacific. And so this was celebrated as a major American initiative. But for some reason, President Trump did not like it at all. And one of the first things he decided was to get out of the TPP. So in January 2017 itself, United States got out of it. And uh, this group or trade arrangement was floating for some time without any leadership. So once Trump pulled out of the uh, TTP, TPP, uh, the remaining members, that is um, out of the 12, 11 left, they call it a new name. That is the CPTPP. So TPP with a new addition, that is Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. So TPP disappeared and uh, we got a new CPTPP with 11 members, Australia, Canada, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore, Vietnam, Peru, 
Brunei, Chile, and Malaysia. Quite a mix of, of countries. And uh, this is so a kind of developing as a trade arrangement, trade agreement with 11 countries. And this was negotiated for about six years and the market-oriented group came up without China, without India, without US. So these were basically other countries in, uh, in the Indian Ocean and the Pacific region. How this came to news now is that suddenly China has applied for a membership of the CPTPP, which has created a problem. Because originally China was not, was not there, but US was there. And now China applying for it in the context of the changes in the Indo-Pacific, the Quad and AUKUS and all that. China probably felt that they should get into a trade arrangement in the region. And they found a ready-made uh, free trade arrangement with 11 nations and they applied for membership in September 2021, just a few days ago. Of course, it's a matter for the other 11 countries to discuss and decide whether they should take China in or not. Because as you know, these free trade agreements are negotiated over a period of time. There will be many specific areas of activity, many ideas, many commodities, which will be without tariff among them. And so it's a very complicated agreement. And it goes into details, commodity-wise, and so on. So when a new country applies, it has to comply with all the regulations that have already been set up originally by the United States and now as a truncated or a shortened TPP as CPTPP. So this has raised a fundamental question, whether China is eligible, number one, and number two, whether the other members are willing to take China on. And to complicate matters further, Soon after that, Taiwan also applied for membership. Taiwan, as you know, though, it is not recognized as an independent country by many countries, including us. There are many arrangements, regional arrangements in which they participate. So Taiwan has eligibility to apply, and they have also applied. So which means it became even more complicated. And who are the leaders of this group now? It is Japan and Australia, and uh, together with other nine countries, form the CPTPP. And these countries, 11 countries which have signed, all of them have not ratified it as yet. You know, there is a parliamentary procedure for the free trade agreements to come into force. And so some have ratified, some others have not. But anyway, it was in the process of formation when this new crisis came about with the application of China and Taiwan. And uh, you probably know, of course, about another arrangement, a freight trade arrangement called RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, set up in 2019. This was very much in the news because on the eve of becoming a formal group in Bangkok, our prime minister was even present there, but India walked out of it at the last minute. So RCEP already has China there and it has become a major organization. And there is a lot of debate taking place in India today as to whether we should go and join the RCEP and now that China has applied for uh, the uh, CPTPP, the questions are also there whether India should join it. So you have a first class uh, uh, situation of uh, debate, discussion, maybe objections. So people suspect that 
the Chinese application is a response to AUKUS and Quad because they don't they want to establish a position of strength in the region, and therefore it is not at all surprising. But whether China's intentions are honest is something which is being questioned. Because China, in the context of their application, said, you see, we are trying to promote cooperation in the region, while the United States and others are planning to create military structures in the region. So China comes up as a benign power, not wanting to confront with anybody but to cooperate, but nobody takes this by in its face value, they believe that there must be some calculations behind China's application. And here there is a contradiction because there is a grouping called the Quad, which is promoting cooperation in the region. And it's well known that they are grouping against China, or at least to prevent China from getting um, prominence in the region. And then how do you accept the same China into another group led by Australia and Japan? So this is the question. So politically, they can probably block it, but who wants to block China? So they have to appear to be reasonable and apply the yardsticks necessary for someone to join a free trade agreement like that. So does China have the credentials to talk of a market economy? And as you know, there are reports coming out of China that China is increasingly shifting from the market economy to more state-oriented economy. You know, the collapse of the Evergrande, uh, the, uh, the company, the biggest uh, property developments company, and, and it has run into billions of dollars of debt, basically because the Chinese government is not giving them support. And increasingly, President Xi Jinping wants to project China as an economy of the people. Somewhat going back you know, to Deng Xiaoping who made a, it's a, it's a capitalist country virtually. So there are some indications that there are things happening. You all heard about the Jack Ma incident, the biggest uh, private entrepreneur in China has been put in his place. He's not been seen. We don't know what's happening to his company. So similarly, there are uh, important but slow changes in the economy in China. Of course, people are all looking at it because this will have a great impact in the global economy, like it happened in 2008 when Lehman Brothers collapsed. And um, the government did not support it. As a result, there was a cascading effect and it affected all the countries of the world, including us. It was a, a global economic crisis. So some people believe that this collapse of the Evergrande is China's layman moment, a similar moment which is going to grip the Chinese economy as well as the other economies linked with China. So there is the question of the credentials of China being qualified to be in a free trade agreement if their economy is centrally controlled. In the meantime, there are other applications. UK has applied, Thailand, Korea, and Philippines are applying. So some of them are yet to uh, exceed to free trade. And um, for Japan and Australia, yes, but uh, there are others who have not yet completed their formalities. So CPTPP has now become an organization which has become significant in the context of what is happening in the Asia Pacific as well as in China itself. 
Japan and Australia have already indicated that they would not want to welcome China into this group for their own reasons. But some are other, some, some of the others um, are favoring like uh, Malaysia, Singapore, etc. feel that uh, Chinese admission would be helpful. And then China would naturally don't, would not want Taiwan to come in there, therefore there will be a conflict there. So people may say, if we take, we take both of them, or if we don't take either of them. So there is enough uh, situation, uh, crisis situation in the CPTPP. Because if China is moving towards a socialist market economy, as they call it, socialism is coming back. And um, therefore, that may be a reason why some countries will object. And as I mentioned, Australia and Japan are already against it. And Mexico and Canada also, understand it, understandably, um, not, a, not welcome in China. But then, then China has another option. We can have bilateral agreements with all these 11 countries. If they cannot get into the grouping as such, then they can do that. But of course, you can imagine negotiating free trade agreements with 11 countries will take a long time. It will be a laborious process and it will be easier for these countries to join in. So this is supposedly a master stroke by China to create some confusion in the situation and also make this organization appear very, very big. Uh, India is not in the, in the group, but when the question of uh, China's admission came, then the question of India also being talked about. RCEP, we withdrew because the final settlement of the issues were not in favor of India. We thought China would be dominating the sea. And the last minute we pulled out of RCEP, and many people now say that it was not a very wise thing to do because it is a very good organization. So we are neither in the RCEP nor are we in the CPTPP. And um, we have, of course, FTAs with the uh, UK, Australia, UAE, etc. But if we have to be in this group, you need to abide by the regulations of the group. So the question arises whether when you have a grouping like a quad with India, Australia, Japan, and the US, can they also have economic ties with China? So there's a new test. Can India join a freight trade agreement with China when we are in the quad? So, and India also, our own economy is undergoing changes. We have the new idea since the pandemic and the Ladakh invasion, we talk about Atmanarbhar Bharat. So when you say you are Atmanarbhar and you depend on reliance, self-reliance, how far will it tie up with a free trade agreement with so many countries? Will India qualify? Will, like people may challenge China. Will some countries challenge India and say that your economic policies are not liberal enough and therefore you cannot join this group? And this has already happened to us uh, because um, the APEC, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, we are not a member even today. We have been trying to get membership. But it was set up at a time in our relationship, the US was not so good. So US made sure that you are, did not become a member of APEC. We applied and then they suddenly said that there is a freeze, new members cannot be taken. And then they said there are problems with India's economic policy, the taxation, blah, blah, which do not tie up with Asia Pacific. So we, were, we made great efforts. I remember I was in Washington those days and we repeatedly made 
uh, approaches to the US government that India must be admitted to APEC and they gave one excuse or the other. And since then, nothing has happened because we have also not, not pressing for it. But in recent discussions among NGOs and think tanks in Delhi, there is repeated demand that we should try and get into APEC. We were invited to APEC by some host countries in the past, but we are not members. And that may be one a more important and urgent uh, question that we go into this group. And some people have tried to work out whether what will it mean if India wants to join the CPTPP. And the calculation is that it will take 10 to 15 years for us to qualify in terms of the agreements, because it will mean our changing our regulations relating to trade in various ways. So that process of changing our laws in order to make it in keeping with the provisions of the CPTPP, it will take us so long, 10 to 15 years to redesign our regulatory mechanism. Of course, people say it will be good. In any case, India needs to reform our uh, trade policy and uh, we have been postponing it. Whatever changes we have had, we have been sort of tinkering with it, uh, but not really doing anything very serious. And so we need radical reform. And some writers are saying, good, let us now work for the CP, CPTPP, which will help us in the long run to reform our trade policies. So, for, so if it is a 15 years, and um, what will be the political compulsions? How will the US-China relations shape up? These are all things we do not really know. So the discussion is taking place and while you prepare for your own examination, you have to keep this in mind and follow these negotiations. We'll start hearing about it. Whether India will join the RCEP, which is an easier effort because we have done almost everything till the last minute. And if the RCEP had given some more time for India and not insisted that it should be signed then and there in Bangkok, maybe we would have got more time and we would have joined. So we regret that. And therefore, maybe we, must, we may give greater urgency to join the RCEP. But again, if you want to now join, you have to have the agreements of all the members. So it will be necessary for us to consider these two, and we have to observe which ones we um, want to join. And there is also the angle of environment friendly trade agreements, uh, because now the focus is more, as you know, because of the climate change. There are many of these products which are not environment friendly, may have to be dealt with differently. And this was not there, say, five years here, five years ago, 10 years ago. And there is greater emphasis on trade related matters going into the aspect of uh, environment protection. And then will the US apply? Because US had withdrawn and will Biden want to come back? So if China and US do not join, India does not join, etc., then the CPTPP may not be as important as it could be by a wider margin of participation. And since this comes after the setting up of the Quad, the uh, complications relating to its conflict with Quad will also come into play. So many people say that it may be better for India 
not to join the CPTPP, but negotiate individual free trade agreements with all these countries. Now, it is 11, China joins, Taiwan joins, so it becomes, as it grows increasingly, then the effort to sign free trade agreements with all these countries would be more beneficial than join the CPTPP itself. So this is the present picture. So I brought this up basically to bring your attention to this particular issue, because this is not something which appears in the press. So not many people are giving attention to that. I'm myself not a trade expert. I'm watching this basically from a political perspective. And you may therefore want to read up and understand the various implications. But if there is something that I can clarify in the context of what I said, we can have a discussion. Thank you very much. Because Taiwan has a persona as its own in the commercial and trade areas. We have a big trade and we have a trade representative in Taiwan whom the Taiwanese called the Indian ambassador. My own brother was there in Taiwan. He used to call himself trade representative, but all the Taiwanese called him ambassador. So it was a kind of dual thing. So many, because many countries have one China policy and therefore you cannot have diplomatic relations with Taiwan. But of course you must have also observed that China is, China is raising its heat against Taiwan in the recent months. Today in the Hindu, there is a, an op-ed article by Shyam Saran about the possibility of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Not invasion in the real sense, but tensions going up and uh, Xi Jinping saying that uh, uh, Taiwan will be integrated because they say it's in a peaceful manner we integrate. But Taiwan immediately said that we are in no mood to integrate because they have seen what happened to Hong Kong. Hong Kong agreed to join China on the understanding that there will be two political systems and two economic systems and one political system. Or within one country, two systems. That was the philosophy. But as Hong Kong retained much of its independent nature, uh, China has clamped down on them. There's a freedom movement, there's a problem in Hong Kong. There is a serious chance of China annexing uh, Hong Kong, which is a little more legitimate than Taiwan, because Taiwan is virtually an independent country, but Hong Kong was part of China also, after the British left. So, if they also integrate them. So this is not a good example that Taiwan can follow if they are offered the same kind of integration. They may be very careful. But uh, things are getting serious and uh, both sides are taking very strong positions and you know the position of the United States. They have also a one China policy, but they have made it very clear that they will defend Taiwan against any foreign aggression. No, this is not a matter of power. Power, of course, trade also gives you power. So, but increasingly the world is becoming getting united on economic and trade matters. The idea is to simplify, but at the same time protecting your own interests. So, having multilateral or bilateral trade agreements or free trade agreements with countries is very fashionable and very popular. Of course, Mr. Biden. Uh, said that he will not enter into any free trade agreements immediately. So even our own trade discussions with the United States is under suspension. But the general trend is for people to join bilateral or uh, multilateral trade agreements. Well, these are all specific matters. I would really not know what uh, conditions we apply when you go for direct group or 
we go for individual FTAs. There must be various considerations. The kind of goods that we import from them, the kind of trade that we have with them, and it is all a, a different categories. Yes, it was because of RCP, there were certain things on which we had problems. And China insisted on finalizing the deals without waiting for India's submissions. That's what happened. So if in, they had given more time to India, we would have gone back with our suggestions, but they blocked it off. And there China played a role. So to reopen it, we have to again go back and try and work it out. Whether India is having FTA with China at present, no, as far as I know. We felt that uh, the kind of concessions that we were expected to give to other countries will not be in our interest. Simple as that. When you talk about trade agreements, we have to ensure that we have more benefits than sacrifices. You know, even about uh, Asian treaties, we have had this occasion to say that some states said that they lose a lot of money, but the central government said that we would earn more. And so there was a balance question even inside the country. And that happens when it comes to trade. Well, one benefit would be that we would have modernized all, all our trade practices, which many experts say that would be very useful for India. And uh, so it will help us to, uh, you know, sync it with the CPTPP, and that will enable us to modernize our trade regime. That is the uh, judgment. Yes, obviously. But integrating Hong Kong with China has not happened as far as these matters are concerned. And they are still very autonomous and independent. And uh, the issues will come up when Hong Kong actually becomes part of the system. Because now there are two systems in one country. And um, there is resistance from the Chinese side to change the two systems into one. And if that happens, then what kind of conflict will arise, we have to see. Yes, that is a concern. And, uh, and then the question arises whether in, being inside it is better or keeping outside it is better. You know, I raised this issue in my Hindu article about our being, say, part of SEO or part of BRICS and part of various all these alphabetical soups because we join at one stage, but then the situation changes. And then we continue with uh, these organizations. So what I was suggesting was that the government must look at all these groups we are members of. And unless you have some meeting points, there may not be any interest in our continuing, like we have closed down SARC because we found that there was no meeting point. But SAR continues, but they are unable to make meetings. Okay, take meetings. So this kind of situation may arise in different groupings. So joining groupings, leaving, etc., will have to be done with great care and interest. Yes, it is not. But, you know, when you talk about the crises like the pandemic, the climate change, supply chains. These are all uh, political as well as economic issues. So these all have to be dealt with in that context. But what the Americans wanted was a clear military alliance. And they found this partnership with Australia and uh, UK. But these countries already are, are partners. They are already allies in other contexts. So there was nothing new in it, but they wanted to project their power in a military manner by creating AUKUS. So now Chinese criticism is more about AUKUS than about Quad, because Quad is becoming more acceptable to China. So it, it is too early for us to draw these judgments at this point, but we can see that such questions will arise. What are the benefits? 
will malabar exercise be part of what in the future all these are questions to be answered well if we can you know relate our trade regulations with those of cptpp we can get the benefit this we have to work out the benefit of free trade which means you have to uh, charge less tariff many goods may be exempted from tariff these are all part of free trade arrangements so that will have to be studied carefully at the moment it's a political question will china be allowed will the us apply what will happen to taiwan these are all issues that i was just flagging and uh, in the coming days and months we will see more developments on this okay so thank you very much we'll see you next week